In education today, there are a number of directions that schools have taken over the last century, really the 20th century. Across the country, in almost every school you see, it's college and career readiness. So the prevailing view of what a human being is, is some kind of economic producer. Education has moved in about the same way everything public has moved. Frankly, in a K-6 arena, everything you do is micromanaged by a district, a state legislature, a department of education. Now we live in an evolutionary age. We think that everything is changing and that uh, keeping up with the change, or better, helping to make the change, is the great goal. We see the effects of that today where schools don't have the same kind of focus on content and so they have a deficit of cultural literacy, they have a deficit of, of knowledge about the human world and the natural world. We have students who come in here and they say, I have to turn in homework? I have homework? Um, what's a zero? You know, at the college level, we had students entering with a standard high school diploma who still couldn't multiply and divide. If it wasn't a five-paragraph essay, and even that was, was a challenge. So the skills that these students were graduating with after 13 years of public education were pretty mediocre. I think there's a prevailing sense that students are graduating either uh, morally lost or just adrift in general or unclear on what life is for. The founders knew that an educated citizenry was necessary to the health of the Republic. So the impacts of this can be seen from the individual lives all the way out to our nation today. Once I really started doing my research on classical ed, I kind of realized that this was the missing piece. This is what they weren't getting. And this is what raises good, strong college students and eventually good, strong adults. The Barney Charter School Initiative is an outreach of Hillsdale College and it's an excellent way to reintroduce sound learning, the classical liberal arts based education that was common, uh, even ubiquitous in, in this country. Charles, let's go make it happen. Good morning, Kiara. Good morning, morning Douglas, looking sharp. Good morning, Isaiah. Good morning, beautiful. Good morning. Best handshake in the school. Jemiah. We serve as the architect of the academic program. We're an advisor to these schools so that they can continue for many years to serve the families and the communities and offer this kind of excellent education. Here at Hillsdale, we don't take any money from the government, so we don't take any money from these schools, but we offer them help. We've contrived a curriculum for and with them, and we help train their teachers, and we try to be of assistance any way we can. I will tell you the school board about fell out of their chairs when I described the relationship with Hillsdale College in our charter school interview. They have a whole team of, of people who work to refine the curriculum, improve what kids are being exposed to, and they make some great recommendations that really help shape our program to be successful. I think last summer there were 400 or so teachers here for a week to 10 days, working with our faculty and with each other. The ability to pick up the phone and call uh, any member of the Barney Charter School Initiative at any time and say, we have a problem and I don't know how to fix it. Um, give me some guidance and it's there. They send a whole team of teachers to starting schools, give a rundown on the curriculum, on classroom management policies, on just the general tenor and culture that the school should, should be seeking. They came down and spent two weeks, 80 hours, with our teachers training them on how to do our curriculum and didn't ask for anything in return. Uh, it's a pretty amazing relationship, I would say. In the classroom, where the mission is actually being fulfilled, it's an interaction between teacher and student and curriculum. We're much more focused on the individual student and making them a well-rounded human being. It's not just about their ability to pass a reading test or a math test, or to just be able to read well, which in many schools is all that matters. We teach young people to understand what a human being is through the fabric of the curriculum itself and the study of great figures in history, both those that exemplify virtue and those that demonstrate vice. It's their ability to understand the world around them, to understand the people around them, to be able to hold a conversation with an adult. I mean, it's so much more exciting when you can tell these kids, we're going to learn this because it's hard, because it's going to teach you to think in a way you've never thought before and you are going to grow as a human being because of it. 
So being able to do that and know why it's being done makes teaching in a classical school just a fantastic experience. What I love most of all is seeing my girls loving learning, enjoying what they're learning, coming home and talking about what they're learning. My son Jaden, the kindergartner, he grabbed a program and began to do phonograms on the bulletin at church. And for him to even be thinking about that, aside from doing his homework, I mean, that really, really blew my mind for a kindergartner to be so interested in it like that. It's funny because all of my children, after they came here from the public school, they said, we want to go back to the public school. And I said, why? What, what did you like better about it? Because this is important to me. They didn't make us do anything. So right That's off not the, what we said. <laughs> right off the bat, I was really, well, that seals it. To see my daughter come home and just pick up books and just lay on the sofa, no TV. She just wants to read. They're reciting poems for fun with their friends. I mean, it's been, it's been really great to, to see that kind of change and growth in them since they've been at the school. I think that's part of being in a classical school, is just being in a, an entire society of people that love learning. I like your school because your kids get an education and like, you need to learn things so you can be smart when you grow up and you won't have trouble with hard stuff. Is there anything else you want to tell all those people out there about Savannah Classical Academy? It's amazing! <laughs> You're amazing. Good job. I am finally in the world of education that I should be in. And I wish that there were more schools that were doing this. Many hundreds of people, I think maybe even thousands of people, are essential to the work of the Barney Project. And we can't do it without that. Learn the truth, do the good, love. As a parent, I became involved in starting a school like this because I wanted something for my own children. Now seeing the impact we've had, I think this is the type of program we need throughout our state and throughout our nation. The impact of the schools on the community is, is palpable. The districts take notice. Policymakers take note. And what that means for a local community can be extended into what that means for the nation. The Barney Project is growing. And of course it takes enormous outside support. And we appeal for more. Everyone, everyone has stake in this. So this can get huge. It can grow everywhere. It's a sign of hope for me because there is a desire and a recognition that education is vital, that we need to do something to improve it, we need to do something to restore it, and thousands of children attending excellent schools, having their character shaped, has exciting prospects for this country.